new video let's continue to work on my RV10 airplane well plans are big but what I will be realistically able to do I don't know we will see so cabin top it's now perfectly fit everything is done cut prepared it's time to actually drill a holes and follow the instructions from van yeah so just to prepare the whole cabin top but before I will start my finalization for the uh, cabin top like really attaching with it with the bolts screws whatever with the rivets I still have to attach my top uh, my um, top part right which is not ready yet so it's just still a mold so I still have to put a fiberglass and everything so that's why I'm saying lots of work to do and yeah let's work let's see what I will be able to do you will see that in this video very soon Let's go! So now I'm using specifically West system uh, components. Uh, I was, was using 406 today to create the body of the consistency I want uh, using my resin and using my epoxy resin and uh, slow 206 hardener. That works way better. So better to use that. I have no idea why I start to use automotive body. Don't ask me why I did that. It's a mistake. Don't use that. So why I use the automotive body on XPC? Uh, I don't know. The stupid idea, bad idea, don't do like that. We have perfect products. Well, I use West System epoxy resin with those fillers and uh, that works way better. Maybe just because I had 
some amount of uh, automotive body which is lightweight and good but I totally forgot the base it's not the epoxy resin base and it definitely burn uh, the foam so far so good waiting now for my um, epoxy to dry out so I can sand it uh, it goes well I understand well why uh, other sellers want thousand plus bucks for their panel that's definitely because it worth it because well it's large amount of work but again I do it not because of the money but first of all because of the experience and I want to see how I can do that so it's interesting for me let's continue to work Ooh, don't even ask me after how many weeks but finally I started to work on the mold so my uh, my plug is almost ready and now I'm getting things prepared for the actually making out the actual mold out of this construction yeah it took a huge amount of time I will later on elaborate a little bit more about it what's happened and why it took me so long but what I'm doing right now is just basically I'm attaching the flat uh, totally flat uh, uh, wooden uh, uh, totally flat uh, wooden pieces uh, to the bottom of my uh, of my plug with a heat gun and doing that and to ensure that to ensure that I'm gonna have a nice nice flat lips uh, on my uh, on my mold so basically I need like this side lips whatever you call it uh, sides uh, for my mold so I need to have it really like flat and nice so that's what I'm doing right now I have to attach it all across my my plug and after that I can start to well to do next steps to prepare the mold to apply some chemicals here and uh, yeah you will see that so yeah finally after many weeks all right so that's how it should look like so basically the idea is that this is a plug and after we're going to be applying a gel coat well we'll apply some chemistry here but at the end we're going to be applying a gel coat and our gel coat is actually going to be the inner surface of our mold or outer surface whatever you call it so we should actually go with gel coat some distance and we need to have it flat so well that's basically the whole idea that we need to have from the whole plug we need to have some uh, sort of the spacing like oh, let's say two inches all like that like that and in that case we can safely put a gel coat here and we will have our like bed for the for the mold so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this gel coat which is white unvaxed from Fibertech and it's our local supplier and we're gonna apply it to our plug so well, the whole idea is to use uh, MAKP, -E -E uh, the catalyst to pre-mix it well unfortunately that's the biggest one I have so I'm gonna probably be using it for about 300 milliliters so probably I will need three of those or two of those I don't want to pre-mix in whole can because it's 946 milliliters so almost one liter but I don't think I'm gonna use everything and yeah and we're gonna proceed with painting using the regular brush 
we're gonna paint all plug in this white. So it's time now to take a mat and um, my plug is ready, it's already all under gel coat. So now I'm gonna be using the resin, uh, I'm gonna apply it to a mat and basically by applying it to the mat I'm gonna repeat the shape of my plug, so in other words I'm planning to make a mold out of this part right now. Alright, next milestone. I got my mold. I cannot say it's in good shape to be honest. It's in crappy shape. Well, don't look at this. We don't care about its openings, right? We just care about those places where there is no gel coat. Here, here and here. Uh, like in general, this mold is not so bad. It doesn't look that bad to me. But that's my first mold, so I don't really know how the good mold looks like, right? Well, uh, <laughs> jokes aside, so it looks like it's kind of okay, I think. Maybe it's useful. I will try to, I will try to load up and pull one, uh, one top uh, center console out of it, of course, at least one. Well, I have at least two more people who's asking me to get pull that for them, but I don't think they're gonna like the quality. Anyway, but before that, I have to fix all that, all those issues with gel coat, especially here, here, and here, because otherwise I won't be able to pull my mold. So, looks like I have to add a gel coat here, just physically add it, and after I add it, I just have to gently, gently sand it. Probably I'll read how. It's done. But aside of that, I don't know why it's so dirty here. Anyway, I'll clean it up. But otherwise, yeah, that's my mold. So I didn't break it. <laughs> At least I didn't break it. You know, I was all last evening and today I was thinking I'm gonna, I'm gonna just like break it when I'm gonna be releasing it. Well, it was not that difficult, but it was not that easy. All right, let's continue. So I'm shooting this movie like already almost like two and a half months and it's still the same movie <laughs> and we're still in the same place so mold is done mold is completed I fixed it with the gel coat now I bought from local supplier Fibertech uh, more resin well basically I bought it more I mean I still have some but I need more because I will need more for my uh, cabin top Slow hardener, that's some stuff my daughters picked to, to buy yesterday. Well, I don't know, probably it's too much. That's double sided tape, which I need for the mold. That's my invoice. Oh, almost 500 Canadian dollars, but well, it worth it anyway. Now, and some plumbing. Why I need some plumbing? So, I have that little nice, beautiful vacuum pump, which you will see later. And uh, that vacuum pump I'll be using when I'm gonna be actually fiberglassing my mold inside, like making a part. Because we need to vacuum all air out and basically push with the, um, with the transparent plastic. We need to push down onto the um, material, onto the fiberglass, remove all air and equally fill all, all mold, right? But 
the, that's going to be done through the hose, right? So the hose is going to go inside of the mold and it's going to basically be sucking in the air. But with that air, we're going to get lots of, not lots of, but I think we're going to get some, definitely some resin sucked in. And if that resin goes into pump, what's going to happen, guess, right, we're going to lose our, well, nice, good, expensive pump. For that purpose, I had an option to buy a that vacuum chamber, like the large metal pad, like, I don't know, like pad or whatever, and uh, with two hoses and, uh, and use it. But the quickest option for me is about 10 days now, it's before Christmas time. So I won't get it before January, but my plan is to finish everything before January. Anyway, so I, I went a simple way. I went to the local hardware store I bought those parts for re regular plumbing, just like plumbing supplies for the toilet, I guess. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my own, build my own vacuum chamber. Should be quite simple. So that's gonna be all glued, sealed. I have two adapters, tiny little ones like that. That's gonna go on top of my chamber. One hole is gonna be sucking out to pump and this is gonna be going in from the mold and all glue will just basically will be sucked into the uh, into my chamber and will stay on the bottom. And we don't care that much what's gonna happen with it. I mean, well, if it's gonna be full, I'm just gonna throw it away and probably finally buy myself a normal good chamber which I can use and clean. So, well, that's a temporary solution anyway, but it should work, I hope. And yeah, we need to do some um, polishing of the mold first. So for that purpose I have some sandpaper and I have that nice disc which I'll put on my orbital machine. And, well, money 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 oh I mean believe me if you have an option to buy the panel just buy it don't don't bother if you really want adventures if you like adventures well that's the option for you or if you want to get an experience which is quite good experience because I don't know if I'm gonna be ever fabricating anything else I don't know but maybe I will so it's good learning curve to get all that process to understand how that works uh, of course, next time it's not going to be that expensive because you already know what to do, plus you have some parts left. But for the first time, yeah, that's an option to just basically purchase the panel and um, if you don't want to bother. Or if you really want to, to get all the experience, you can go through the curve, watch my video. I explain in some steps what I was doing. All right, let's continue to work. So that's our chamber, uh, the uh, vacuum chamber. As I said, it's going to be very, it's, it's done already, ready, prepared. So this one I can remove. It has the rubber seal around and two hoses, inlet, outlet. The, I mean, inlet, yeah, inlet from the mold and outlet to pump. Uh, I know that basically I need that little manometer, barometer gauge, uh, but, well, we will see. Maybe I don't need it, maybe, I'm, maybe I need it just to be able to see the vacuum. Maybe I have something here I'll install. So otherwise, that's the chamber, I'll let it dry and yeah, it's done.
Alright, so pump is running, everything is loaded up. We have a plastic vacuum, uh, we have a layers of the field fly of the this sucking agent, uh, whatever this uh, top part, and of course fiberglass, everything is fiberglass and glue. And yeah, well, now it's just to wait. I use the uh, I use the West System uh, slow hardener, which is 206. So my guess is going to be about a couple of hours before I can see at least some result of uh, it getting like harder. harder. Of course, um, I have some. I'm losing some air, some in some places. So it basically sucks in the air. So wow. I mean, it's my first try, right? So I don't know how it's gonna work. I'm even not sure if. After I pull the after I pull the part out, if it's really gonna be okay or it's just gonna all screw up the mold. I don't know. We will see it together. So so far it's like that. It's ready and we're working on. Well, we're basically waiting now, right? So the day has come and well, I thought it's gonna be easy journey. Because I was obviously, well, first of all, my uh, fiberglass resin is completely ready, so it's set now. It's about three or four days past since the moment I, I put everything in. And uh, I was under impression it's gonna be easy journey because, well, fuel ply should not obviously stick to the resin and it should be easy, and this top layer should, I mean, it, it should be easy to disassemble. In fact, it's a pain. I already spent about an hour here and that that's as much as I was able to move. That's it. That's about maybe 10 inches, 12 inches from the end. I even didn't touch that end yet. It goes very slow. I don't know, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I'm using, well, obviously hardware store tools to, to slowly, slowly remove. I'm working now only on removing the peel ply and the top sucking layer, layer that layer which sucked all excess, excessive amount of resin from the from the top part of the of my part. So my actual part, fiberglass part, is still in and attached to the mold. That's a different story. For now, I'm just trying to remove the peel ply. That's a pain. I spent an hour, as I said, and didn't move much forward uh, well it's sad to say but I I failed I failed big time so I removed the mold uh, the part from the mold and what I found is that lots of spots are actually not in the, not as per shape so for example if we go here you see that's a, it's maybe hard to see because all the same color, like transparent, but those huge openings here, huge opening here, huge opening here, large opening here, just huge one. So, it, ah, yeah, it looks like I screw up and I have to just screw this mold, install my cabin top and just buy one because unfortunately, the pro and actually mold, my mold start to break in many places like that. So you see that white, it's from the mold. So I, I don't know, I mean, I have to think now, is it worse to try to repair it, like using the filler? Because you see, for example, this place, it's, it's like it's filmed, like I can push it easily. So with that means that in this place there is an air inside and uh, well, that's, a, that's, a, that's bad. And uh, yeah, here it's also, you see. Well, so basically that's finally, finally it. That's the end of this, uh, of this part of my videos. Well, uh, despite I failed with my uh, overhead console panel, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, it's sad. Of course it's sad because it's first of all time and of course money. But you know what? I'm not that disappointed or I'm not that in such a bad mood about it. And the main reason is because it's experience. I mean, we pay for experience, to be honest. Like, we learn and we leave and we pay, we pay, and all that goes for experience, because that experience is great. And I tried, 
I did my best while trying to make that panel and uh, at some point of course I was realizing like maybe it's easier to order and, and uh, yeah it's true so I was kind of thinking oh maybe I, I was supposed to order rather than building but I was trying until the last point and even now even right now I would uh, what I did actually yesterday I ordered finally from Air Sport products I ordered the overhead console it's probably gonna come in two three months but even now I still have a mold and I still have a chance to try to make another one uh, obviously if I if I succeed and make another panel probably air sport one I can sell and I probably will be able to sell it right away just because waiting time is kind of long for those panels but I will not focus on that right now. I still have lots of other work to do. First of all, in the upcoming new year, I need to finish a cabin top. So I need to install it, mount it, and I have to start, before I got my finished kit, I have to start, I have to pass my inspection, which is also extremely important because my inspection hopefully is going to happen in January. And that part, which kind of holds me from like all my way going until the uh, engine installation, wings, everything, 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 and uh, going to the final, final inspection pre-flight, right? Before I get my uh, certificate of airworthiness. So basically, inspection is important point, so I will work on my cabin top, I'll pass my inspection, uh, hopefully. <laughs> After that, I will uh, move on to the avionics. I will wait for my finish kit. I hope Vance will be able to supply it in February as previously planned but well with the situation who knows and uh, yeah we will see so that's how it's going right now at this moment so happy upcoming holidays once again new year is coming so I wish you all the best in this upcoming 2022 despite people are calling it 2022 well, hope it's going to be different here for everyone, it's going to be better and uh, it's going to be different from past at least two years, which we are kind of limiting us in our communication and everything. And uh, I look forward for this year for lots of things to happen, to finish my RV-10 airplane, I hope to fly to Oshkosh, most likely not on my RV, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish it before mid-summer, but maybe I'll just fly my Piper there. And yeah, more challenges. I know there will be way more challenges because I'm now at some probably 55% point of my build, right? All right, happy new year and see you in new year in my new videos about my written build. Bye everyone.